My wife confessed she was seeing someone just before our agreed divorce. Now I'm broken and sure how to protect my kids from this pain. I've been married 16 and a half years with my wife 21. We have had ups and downs. When I met her, she was teat nicest, kindest woman I'd ever met. I literally told her she was going to be my wife two minutes after meeting her. So we have two kids that are my entire world. After our second child, she started to get distant, depressed, and different. I thought she was struggling with depression. She refused to look into it. She wanted couples counseling, but this was during the recession, and I was working four jobs and a side business just to barely make it another month. I couldn't afford another $50 a week, especially when she wouldn't talk to me. I asked her what was wrong and she'd always say, I don't know, but she'd have good weeks and bad weeks. Sometimes she'd be great, others she'd be mean and disrespectful. Once we were back on our feet, I begged her to go to counseling with me. She eventually said, okay, but I don't think she liked it. We went to a woman that I think she thought was going to just tell us that I was doing everything wrong and needed to do better. She didn't, at all. At first she told her the same thing I did, I can't work with I don't know. So my wife said she needed more help around the house. Cool. This was 2015. Since then I've worked three jobs. Vacuum the house, empty the dishwasher and sink daily, help with the laundry, take out the trash, and straighten up the house. Things were good for a bit. Then she got mean again. This time she started snapping on my daughter a lot. Finally I pulled her aside and told her that I would never divorce her. I would try to work and make our marriage better for as long as it took. But I think because my daughter is so much like me, she was taking her venom out on her. And I can't allow that. So if she wanted a divorce, that's what we'd do. The next day she said she wanted to try and make it work. Sure, for a few years things were good. She even went to a doctor and got prescribed an antidepressant but insisted on the lowest dose. Fast forward to 2020. Went right back to the meanness and disrespect. But worse. There was total disdain in her voice whenever she spoke to me. And a look of disgust whenever I showed up somewhere. It hurt. Sex was never a problem with us, and we both seemed to really enjoy each other, but when Shed get in these moods, Shed withhold. Still, I never cheated, even though as a bartender I had many, many offers. At one point, my sister told me she just assumed I had been cheating because she knew my wife wasn't putting out for so long. I told her Lee never do that. So now we are here. Last month after a wedding, we were at a hotel, and I'll pine to fool around when she told me flat out. I don't want you. I think we should get divorced. We agreed to do it but hold off till after the holidays for the kids. She fell asleep 10 minutes later. I laid in bed with tears pouring down my face for 3 hours, though I thought it was going to be the most pain I ever felt. Then Terry's today. A week ago she had to go to a party for my daughter's softball team. At midnight she wasn't home so I checked our live 360 app and she was at an Applebee's. So weird but I thought she met her friend for a drink after. Thing is she was there till 1 but they closed at 12. I asked where she went and she said some bar with the people from the party. Never said Applebee's, which was odd. Two days later, she said her boss told her she had to put a password on her phone because of work emails. Now I was suspicious. Today, her mom called and asked if I could help her husband move a rug. So I went to help. She had. So I decided to try something. My wife has a bad habit of needing to talk on the phone when she drives, so I called her. One, she was short and said she had to go because she was talking to her mom, who was standing right in front of me. Okay, I went home. When she got there, I asked how her mom was and if she told her I had seen her today. She said she hadn't and asked where I saw her. I said at her house. When I called you, her face dropped. She tried some half-assed excuses but finally admitted she had been seeing someone. For a few months so before we agreed to divorce, I was shell-shocked. Ten minutes later she was acting like nothing happened. I don't know if it was to not tip off the kids or because she just don't care that she crushed me but I suspect the latter. I couldn't even talk to anyone about it as we've kept it secret that we agreed to divorce so nobody slipped to my kids. And we had to go to a Christmas village tonight, so we weary all out all night. My kids knew something was wrong with me but just thought I was in a bad mood. My son literally said you sound hurt. I just don't know what I'm gonna do. The prospect of divorce was already stressful enough. And I've lost 20 pounds in the past month. Without even trying just figuring out how we can do this without me losing my house. I've spent the last 15 years paying off her $10,000 in credit card debt, $15,000 in student loans, and $45,000 car. Now I'm gonna owe her at least $40,000 for the house. It's going to be painful, but I think I can do it. I was finally starting to mentally prepare myself for the divorce, and then this betrayal just hit me like a ton of bricks. In the last month, she's hurt me more than I ever thought possible. I don't even recognize the woman I married anymore. I don't even know what to do. My daughter's gonna be heartbroken when we tell her we're splitting up, but I don't even know if I should tell her about this, because I don't want her hating her mom. I'm lost, confused, stressed beyond belief and heartbroken, and I look at my wife and she looks like she couldn't care less. Thank you for listening. 
I don't even know if what I wrote is allowed or too much off topic, but either way, I thank you because it was very therapeutic to just type it out and get it off my chest. Even if I'm typing this with more tears streaming down my face. Thank you guys. Update one three month update from day okay. So it's been three months from my initial post and it's been quite a trip. Please excuse the length of this post. I got a lot of advice on my initial post. Look at my submission history to see the original story. But I decided to follow my gut on how to proceed, it's going okay. Still not done yet, as expected considering it's only been a few months. Apparently that's their sole way of communicating, most likely because Hez married with three kids, is also a doctor and rich. That one was a real punch in the gut to a guy working three jobs to survive. On Christmas I found out she had told her whole family we were divorcing, along with my sister and my cousin's wives. But meanwhile I had still told nobody out of fear of it getting back to my kids before the holidays were over. Um, her mom was not happy, thought she was making the biggest mistake of her life. Same with my sister and her best friend, she didn't care. She also left out the part about her cheating of course. I couldn't talk to her mom at Christmas because she was already starting to cry and I didn't want to tip off my kids, so I set it up to talk to her a few days later. The next day my wife and I sat down and talked. I told her I didn't want her seeing the guy again till everything was done. It was disrespectful, and if she wanted him to divorce his friends, she doesn't treat a friend like that, she agreed. Then we discussed how we'd split things up. I think I did okay. No alimony. No child support. 5050 custody. We both supply clothes for the kids. Everything else gets split equally. In keeping the house, I have to pay her $43,000 in equity. In the end, she walked with about $40,000. She owes her dad $10,000, an 800 credit score, and zero debt. All thanks to me. When I finally went to speak to her mom, I found out that when she found out we were going to talk, she came clean to her. She originally lied about cheating when her mom asked, then told her the truth after. So my mill was furious, really ripped into her, then cried to me that she was scared I was going to cut her out of my life, which I assured her would never happen. Fast forward to mid-January. Now I'm down 40 pounds. I'm going to the gym every day to relieve stress. Now we have to tell my kids. I told her I wouldn't lie to my kids, but I wasn't going to just doubt her either. I said if they asked, I'd try to steer the conversation a different way. She said she felt the same way. The thing is, I knew this wouldn't fly with my daughter. She's like a 14-year-old clone of me. She can spot bullshit a mile away. And that's what happened. Before we even said anything, my daughter asked if we were getting divorced when we sat them down. And my wife said yes and my kids lost it. Lots of crying. I saw them crying and I started crying. <laughs> then my wife made a big mistake. She said, listen, we both want this. And that's when my daughter let her have it with everything she had. She screamed, that's bullshit. My father would never want this, you want this. Look at him, he's crying. I've never seen him cry in my life. This is you. Then she asked if my wife was cheating on me. My wife tried to change the subject, but she wasn't having it. She grilled her while screaming, tell me the truth. Over and over until my wife fessed up. But after that, it was like I could see her brain moving. She started calling out every red flag over and over and made my wife confess to it. In three minutes, she got more out of her than I did in a month. Afterwards, I spoke to my kids alone. My son is 12 and just needed reassurance that things were going to be okay and would change as little as possible. So although now I can see Hess dreading when things finally finish, my daughter told me she was crying for me, not her, because of how hurt I had to be. I comforted her and made her feel better. Then she asked me to make her a promise, because I've never broken a promise to my kids. She asked me to promise if when this is all over, if my wife loses her new house and needs a place to stay for a while, I would let her stay here. All this shit going on, she could have asked for anything, and she looked out for her mom. I couldn't say no. When she talked to her mom, she asked her to promise to stop talking to the guy. She broke that promise after two weeks. Since then, she started sneaking around again and seeing him for half-hour stints at places like Target. I caught her again, and again we had a blowout. And again, she agreed to stop seeing him, even though she still talks to him. Apparently, she has feelings for him now. Hey, like I said, she can't bullshit my daughter. So eventually, she'll know she broke that promise. There's no need for me to tell her. Right now, I'm in the process of refinancing my house, and she's looking for a house of her own. She's got her rich aunt co-signing for her, so hopefully she'll find something soon. Also, one other thing, and I know this one is going to be controversial on this sub. Yes, I have proof, and yes, I know everything about this guy now, but I have decided not to tell his wife. I'm not proud to say it, but my motives are completely selfish and self-serving. The fact is, if I tell her, they get divorced. And then, when my wife leaves, she has a ready-made relationship waiting for her. A rich guy who even after divorce will still be rich, taking her on expensive dates and nice vacations, helping her with her bills, etc. while I struggle. As much as I want to hurt this guy, I want to hurt her more. So when she leaves, her sneaking around is over, but it isn't. 
They won't be able to go out on dates, so you'll get to see how much of a side piece she really is. They'll only be able to meet at her house and hell have to leave as soon as Hez. Oh. He won't be giving her any money because it could tip off his wife. And now that she is feeling for him, she'll see if Hez gonna leave his wife and leave her family for her. I'm betting he won't. But if he does, fine. But Hez gonna have to be the one to have the balls to do it. I'm not gonna do his dirty work for him. That's what happened with her rich aunt. She fucked a married man. The wife found out and left, and she moved right in. Went from being a broke single mom to a millionaire. That might happen with my wife, but I'm not gonna help make it happen. Thanks for reading. And I still read this sub all the time, and it's been extremely therapeutic. And please try to be nice. I know everyone won't agree with everything in this post. Just please try to understand that every situation is different. Thank you. Update 2. It's been 16 months since I found out. Here's an update so if you look at my post history, you'll see what happened. Caught my wife cheating after almost 17 years of marriage. So the divorce finalized this past August. I promised my kids their lives would change as little as possible. And I've kept that promise. In August, we finalized the divorce. She was looking for houses while living here. She got out bid 16 times. I found a house around the corner for me that she loved. I spoke to the owner and he basically let her have it without taking any other bids. She never would have gotten the house without me, which makes me feel good as my kids are now never more than 30 seconds away from me. Our divorce agreement worked out great for me. No alimony. No child support. 5050 custody. To kept the house and paid her the equity was able to refee before interest rates skyrocketed. For the next few months, I basically refurnished my house after splitting the furniture. Changed some stuff around, changed pictures, focused on that and my kids. Stayed positive. Kept going to the gym and working. It's been good. I've been friendly with her throughout, which put my kids at ease and helped them get used to everything. She even came to Thanksgiving and Christmas Eve at my sister's. People think I'm crazy. But I let go of the ill will and helped my kids celebrate the holidays normally. And that makes me happy. Financially, I've been doing great. While I'm not sure but I think she's struggling, she was never the best at budgeting money. We are supposed to split everything the kids need outside of food and clothes but I wind up paying for more than I should, which I don't mind because I know it's going to my kids. In December I met a beautiful, wonderful woman. She lives about an hour away and is divorced with two kids. Because of the custody schedule we only get to see each other a few times a month but she's amazing and really makes me happy. I don't know what my ex's dating life is like. I don't know if she still sees the guy or not. I know she's hooked up with a couple other people, but I don't ask about it. I know one night she went out with a guy three weeks after she moved out and she got jumped by four girls and had the shit beat out of her, which I'm not gonna lie, made me laugh. As far as the guy she was cheating on me with, well, we have some mutual friends that I've told. This one couple I'm friends with saw him with his family at a function and started having a conversation in front of them where they mentioned my name and that I had found out my wife was cheating on me. They said I knew who the guy was but hadn't done anything yet. Then they started saying stuff like man if he decides to go after him. They won't find that guy's body for 50 years and shit like that. Just laughing and watching him sweat without letting on they knew it was him. I don't think my ex ever told him I knew about the affair. So that was probably a nice surprise for him. I'm sure three run into him eventually. Not sure how that will play out but I'm not going out and seeking it. So basically 16 months after D-Day I've got a new girlfriend. A great relationship with my kids. A happy work life. I'm in great shape physically and I'm doing great financially. I don't think it could have worked out for me any better. So if anyone going through it now needs some advice, here's what I would say, stay positive. Don't let the resentment and negative feelings take control of your life. If you don't have a lot of money, try to sit down and work out a deal with your spouse without lawyers. This way you actually have some money to walk away with. If you have kids, try to maintain an amicable relationship with your spouse. I know how hard this is, but you are doing it for your children, not for them. Exercise is a great way to distress. Find a gym and start going. It'll help your mental health as well as your physical health. I remember that every situation is different. Find the path that works best for your situation. When they are gone, remember they are gone. They aren't coming back to you. And if they do, it's probably not for your best interest. The trust is gone forever. So move on and find someone that deserves you. If you're not the kind of person that meets people in the world often, try a dating app like Bumble. So they work. I know this update isn't as satisfying as some in this sub would like, but it really worked out well for me and my kids, and that's all I really wanted. So yay, I'm a lot happier now than I was after that first post. And I think that's the goal of this sub in the end. So thanks for all the kind words and support. It helped a lot. Now onto the next story. Story 2. I caught Mike Zeef doing this with her app at a friend's wedding, so I exposed her and now she's a wreck. My wife, 32 female, has always been my biggest supporter, especially when it comes to my DJing career. It's actually how we first met back in 2011 at a school event where I was starting out as a DJ in our town. The moment we started talking, we just clicked. 
We had so much in common, from our interest to our taste in music and favorite bands. At first, we decided to hang out as friends, but before long, we knew there was something more between us, and we started dating. Fast forward to 2013, we got engaged, and to celebrate, we took a trip together. We often reminisce about that trip where we listened to the entire Third Eye Blind catalog and sang along to all the songs. That year, we tied the knot and got married. Throughout our marriage, we developed this special tradition of trying to see our favorite band, Third Eye Blind, as often as possible. We made it a point to attend their concerts whenever they were on tour. And over the course of our nine-year marriage, we managed to catch them nine times. It's been a fantastic journey filled with shared passions and great memories. Last night was supposed to be our 10th time seeing our favorite band. Can you believe it? We've been married for 10 years as well, and our anniversary is just around the corner in November. I had this amazing plan all set up for us. We'd go to the concert, stay at a nice hotel, and have a super romantic night together. And to top it all off, I got her a beautiful custom necklace made of gold with her name on it, and her favorite lyrics engraved. I'd been saving my entire salary for the past year just for this special gift, and I knew she would absolutely adore it. So, on Friday night, the big day arrived, the day of the concert in our 10th anniversary celebration. When I got back home from work, I found my wife getting ready, looking as stunning as ever. I was all excited to give her the necklace and the concert tickets, so I went to my work laptop bag where I kept them. But then, I noticed her phone on the table, and it had a notification buzzing. I couldn't resist my curiosity, so I tapped on the message. The text was from an unknown number, and it said, How was today? I miss you so much. When can I see you again? Man, it was such a shock for me, and my chest felt this weird, heavy feeling when I saw that message on her phone. I couldn't help but scroll through their chat, and with every message I read, I got more and more disgusted with my wife. I mean, how could she do this to me? That was the only question running through my mind. The worst part was when she mentioned him needing condoms, and he replied to it with a picture of a pack of condoms in his car, with the caption saying already. It made me wonder if they even used any, but honestly at this point, does it even matter? I didn't want to stay in the house a minute longer. So I grabbed my work bag, which had the concert tickets and the necklace I got her. I needed some space to process what was happening before I confronted her about it. So I hopped in the car and drove straight to the concert. I had spent a lot of money on those VI pickets, so I figured he might as well make use of them. About 15 minutes into the drive, my wife called me, sounding surprised and annoyed at the same time. She asked where I was and what I was up to. Can you believe the audacity she had to ask me that? I was so angry that I told her I was on my way to the show since she already had her fun private show in the afternoon. So there was silence on the other end, but I was too furious to carry on the conversation, so I just hung up. I was still in shock and couldn't believe what I had just discovered. At that moment, I was feeling numb, like I didn't know what to feel. Then she called me back, and it was like she was going through the motions. She started crying and tried to explain that they were just friends and that nothing actually happened between them. But I couldn't take her excuses anymore. I felt like she never respected me or truly loved me the way I loved her. It all just spilled out and I reminded her how I went all out to get her an expensive gift for our special anniversary. She got quiet, and then suddenly she acted like she was crying and asked what I got her. It felt like she was trying to manipulate me into feeling sorry for her and forgiving her. I was done with her lies and drama at that point. I told her to leave me alone and be with whoever she wanted to be with. So, but she insisted that we talk about it like adults and wanted me to come back as if I'm the childish one for having stormed out. I saw through her plan though. She was going to act innocent, make me feel guilty, and then try to seduce me. And honestly, just the thought of it disgusted me. I never thought I'd feel that way about my wife and the idea of being intimate with her. It was all just too much. So I made it to the concert, and when I handed my ticket to the guy at the entrance, he looked at me and said, There's two, meaning he needed to scan the other ticket too. I must have been in a daze or something, because I just stared at him blankly and replied, Yes, there's two and then walked inside. It was like I was in some weird trance or hypnotized or something. Anyway, the show was incredible. I had a blast and really enjoyed myself. I even ended up making friends with some cool people in my row, and we all had a great time together, singing along to the songs. But I have to admit, some of the lyrics hit me differently that night, considering everything that was going on. During the concert, I felt so alive. I danced and screamed along with the crowd, and it was like a release for all the frustrations I was feeling. The loud rock music drowned out everything else, and it was just what I needed. And when the concert ended, it was still pretty early, and I thought about sitting at the bar and having a drink. But the idea of talking to someone outside of the concert context just felt overwhelming. My mind kept going back to those texts and what I had discovered, and it was hard to shake off those thoughts. So after the concert, I headed to the hotel where I had made a reservation for my wife and me. But there I was, sleeping alone. When I woke up, my inbox was flooded with about 30 emails from her. It seemed like she had been up all night, going through a roller coaster of emotions. Guilt, shame, and even anger, 
Surprisingly, some of her emails were filled with anger towards me for going through her phone. It was surreal to read those, as if I was the one in the wrong. She pleaded in bargain, leaving voice messages expressing her surprise that I had gotten her an expensive gift, which she found out by going through my emails. She begged me to answer her calls and wanted us to talk things out, hoping we could salvage our anniversary night and make it memorable. That night turned out to be unforgettable, but not in the way I had imagined. It was when I finally saw the true colors of the person I had been married to, even though it took me nearly 12 years to fully realize it. The worst part was when she sent me all the cards I had written for her over the years anniversary cards, birthday cards, Christmas cards. I always poured my heart into those cards, expressing my deep love for her. It was something I had never done for anyone else before. And she used to write such heartfelt cards for me too, although she hadn't done so in years. I think her intention was for me to read those cards and have my heart soften, to remember how much I loved her. She hoped that I would come to my senses, reach out to her, and that we would talk things through leading to forgiveness and a better future together. But instead, reading those cards made me realize just how little she loved me. It was a painful realization. That night, as heartbreaking as it was, opened my eyes to who my wife truly was, despite us being together for nearly 12 years. I realized that I needed to come to terms with the situation and decide what was best for both of us moving forward.